Which is better, Thailand or Bali? I've actually been asked this question more times than I can count and it's one of the hardest things for me to answer because I love both of them. They both have unique things to offer and even though they both have blue water, they're completely different destinations. I studied in Bangkok, Thailand and I've traveled most of the country and I actually live in Bali, Indonesia. So I definitely have a lot to share. Let's get into it. Video, I want to talk about which destination is the most beautiful, which is the most inexpensive, which is safer, which has the best food, which is the most fun, and which one I recommend most. The first thing I need to get out of the way is that Thailand is an entire country and Bali is a single island in Indonesia. Thailand being a country is so much bigger than the island of Bali. And because of this massive landmass difference, you're going to see that Thailand definitely has more variety to offer. From the chaos of Bangkok, the elephant inhabited jungles of the north of Chiang Mai, and of course the beautiful rocky cliff sides of Maya Bay. Bali on the other hand is for the most part all inside this one landmass but despite being significantly smaller you're going to be shocked at the diversity of experiences from waterfalls to rice terraces from surfing Uluwatu partying in Changu or going on a silent retreat in the north this island punches well above its size. With that out of the way let's see which of these destinations is the least expensive. In both Thailand and Bali you're gonna see massive spreads in the price you pay for the local food versus the tourist restaurants. On the local side, you can certainly get away with spending one to two dollars and having a really satisfying meal. But once you make your way to a trendy coffee shop in Bangkok, in Koh Phi Phi, or here in Changu, you're starting to look at prices around five to eight dollars just for the meal. From my recent visit back to Thailand, I actually would say that Bali's food prices were very similar if not just a little bit cheaper. But right now, one of the things that's going on in Bali is a massive housing shortage. And because of that, hotels, villas and anything else that gives you a bed is going to be significantly more expensive than it used to be. Because of that, I would say Thailand is quite a bit cheaper on the housing side of things, probably running about 20 to 25% less per night. In terms of entertainment, I would say whether you're going on a boat ride, a day trip or anything of that nature, your activity budget is going to be very comparable across the two destinations. Now let's talk about transportation. Here in Bali, it can be exceptionally affordable. You can get around the entire island with a small scooter that costs you three and a half dollars a day or you can have a chauffeured vehicle for about $30 to $40 a day. Now, Thailand, as we said before, is a much larger landmass. And if you plan to see most of it, you're going to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars from planes, trains, buses, and automobiles. In Bangkok, it can be around the same prices as Bali. But once you leave Bangkok, be prepared because flights are going to be relatively expensive. And also the private taxis outside of the city are easily four to five times more expensive than in Bangkok. Overall, you can certainly rough it in either their destination for $25 a day or you can have a comfortable trip from $50 to $100 a day but I would say the least expensive is going to be Bali because of the fact your transport is just going to cost you a lot more in Thailand. Now let's talk about which is the safest. And for me, it's pretty simple. It's Bali. Bali is one of the safest places I've ever been. Whether you get on a scooter and drive to the north or the far extreme to the south, you always feel safe here. People are extremely kind. If your bike broke down in the middle of nowhere, a local will invite you in, fix up your bike, and likely not even charge you for it. The amount of love that I feel here on this island from the local people is very difficult to come by anywhere else in this planet. But on top of that, it's very seldom that I see Balinese people people getting angry. It's not very often that I see them manipulating prices. Sure, if you go to the taxi at the airport, be prepared to pay a premium, a serious premium. But in Thailand, I see things done in a less honest way. The biggest danger of Bali is actually the same thing that you're going to face in Thailand. It's going to be motor accidents, especially if you're new to scootering. Be very careful, wear a helmet. I've seen more than enough scooter accidents to last a lifetime. It's always happening to the backpackers that are just not yet skilled enough on their bikes or even worse, the ones that have had too much to drink. So don't be that person. That is the biggest danger of any Southeast Asian destination. Not to play mom LeBlanc here, but just remember to get health insurance before traveling because the unexpected can happen no matter where you travel. Now, as for Thailand, I feel exceptionally safe in this country. It's a very beautiful place with kind people, but we are comparing them to Bali and Bali is at a different level. The people here are so gentle and sweet. And in Thailand, they can be a little more harsh. They can be a little bit more 
forward and certainly a lot faster to anger. Oh yeah, and people get really, really messed up at the fire shows in Thailand. If you're gonna indulge in some Chong beers, my recommendation is do not try to do the fire rope jump. I've seen some things that I cannot unsee. That's all I'm gonna say. So I have had a lot of suitcases, but there's one thing that's groundbreakingly different about this one. Now this suitcase is incredibly premium. All the materials from the zippers, the wheels are literally smooth as butter. I've never had a suitcase that basically rolls itself. The wheels are that good. The wind literally blew them away. But what I wanna show you is this. This is what makes this suitcase my new suitcase. I'm very excited about this because instead of splitting the suitcase down the middle, you access from this top. And what this does for you is it means that whether you are shoving your suitcase in a corner, it's in a small closet, you now can access everything without the inconvenience of having to try and open a suitcase in a small quarter. And to make things even better, this suitcase is probably the biggest I've ever had, but you can make it even bigger. And the whole Kubo series has the same design with the top access, a very beautiful carry-on suitcase with a laptop sleeve. For any traveler, it's so handy to have a built-in locking system. So, got my top secret password here and boom. These suitcases come in a bunch of different colors. I have boldly gone for an off-white. Let's see how long they stay that way. If you guys want to get yourself a set of Logel suitcases or any of their other amazing backpacks, then check that link down below and let's get back to the video. Food. If your idea of travel is immersing yourself in new culinary experiences, then the clear winner for you is Thailand. Thailand is a mecca for foodies. Thai food is certainly not limited to spicy food. The breadth of the culinary experiences here is mind-blowing. In my eyes, there's only a couple other countries on this planet that can keep up with Thailand. Their food is just on another level. From masaman curry, pad kaprao, and mango sticky rice, I mean, you could literally travel to Thailand just to eat and leave a very, very happy travel. Now let's talk about Bali, a destination that's not exactly internationally renowned for its local cuisine, but in my opinion, it's definitely a must experience when you come travel here. There's some really great local dishes, babi guling, pork ribs being one of my favorites. For the budget traveler, you're gonna get to know and love nasi goreng, which is basically just fried rice and chicken. But while I definitely enjoy some of these dishes, it has nothing on Thai food. For me, there's no comparison. And although food is so subjective, I'm gonna say Thailand is kind of the landslide winner on the food side. Now, let's talk about the beauty. And as you can see, this is Maya Bay, Thailand. One of the most, no, it's actually the most beautiful beach I've ever seen. It definitely attracts its crowds, but if you were just to take the actual beauty of it all, it doesn't get any better than this. If I were to give you an answer short and sweet, the more beautiful of the two is Thailand. But it's super important to remember that this is a country and to see all of its diverse beauties from the jungle to the chaos of Bangkok and the beauty of Maya Bay, you're gonna need to travel. You're gonna be on trains, planes, and and long car rides to get from place to place. It's completely worth it, but just know it's not gonna come without work. And if you're gonna do Bali, Bali has all of that beauty from waterfalls, cliff sides, amazing rice fields, and so much more on a single island. Bali is the most beautiful of the two if you just consider the size of it, but Thailand is a massive country and it just naturally has more to offer. And in my opinion, Rayleigh, Maya Bay, all these areas with these insane cliff sides are just among the most beautiful places on our planet. Whichever you pick, you won't be disappointed but I'm gonna have to give this one to Thailand now which destination is the most fun now this is really tricky because we all define fun in different ways if your goal is to have an exotic destination which provides beautiful day trips meaningful and rich cultural immersion delicious dining and nights out well I'll say both of these destinations offer this so let's break it down as such you see Thailand will make you uncomfortable at times, and that's not a bad thing. For many of us, including myself, that's why we travel. We want to experience new things. We want to be thrown into things that sometimes make us uncomfortable, but leave us feeling changed or at least more knowledgeable at the end of it. Thailand is an exceptional opportunity to create memories by trying new things and overcoming challenges. On the other hand, if your goal is to go to a yoga retreat, have a coffee in a bohemian style coffee shop, and end your day at a beautiful beach club, then Bali has your name written. On it. But the beautiful thing about Bali is that it's not limited to these Western style amenities and experiences. There's so much more. It has all the adventurous experiences right at your back door. You can scuba dive a shipwreck. You can catch 
watch sunrise on top of a volcano. And you can rent a moped and go and explore anywhere on the island and see the areas that so few others have seen before you. You see, Thailand is for the adventurer, but it has a side of comfort. Whereas Bali is comfort, but has a side of adventure. Now the question remains, which am I going to recommend for you? I think the best analogy is that if you were to travel the Bahamas, you could either do it on a massive cruise or you could do it on your private catamaran. The cruise ship is kind of like Bali because like on a cruise ship, you have all of those comforts always at arm's reach. Now traveling Thailand is the catamaran where you're going to feel the waves being thrown at you from time to time. But those waves, although they may cause some difficulties along the way, they're going to make for those memorable adventures where you overcame a challenge. Sometimes it's a cultural shock or maybe it's the time your bus broke down in the middle of nowhere. But I'll tell you as a traveler, these are where my best stories have come from. As someone who's traveled to like 80 countries, I can tell you that the finest memories are found in those waves. And yes, you can have a super luxurious, comfortable time in Thailand, but if you're seeking the wave, seeking to feel the adventure, then you're gonna have more options than you would in Bali. And while this one is super hard for me, if I had to start all over again, having never experienced either, and I could only pick one, I would probably go with Thailand. And you might be asking, well, why do you live in Bali then? And the answer is, what you're looking for from your home is often very different than what you want from your travels. When I'm on the road, I crave adventure. I crave exploring new places and feeling like a pioneer. But most of all, I crave getting lost. It's the reason I started this channel in the first place as I got that backpack and started traveling for eight months across Southeast Asia. And with that, Thailand opens up more options for me. Now, if you wanna hear more comparisons, I actually just finished 12 days backpacking through Thailand and I documented the entire thing in a vlog series, which I will have linked down below. Now, if you choose Bali as your destination, no stress, I've got an entire travel guide to Bali also linked right there. Go give that a look and see for yourself why I've chosen to make this my home. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then I hope to see you around here and let's get lost again in the next one.